so today actually I am going to start with a new topic. So we will be looking at now the continuous time. Continuous time Markov chains. Okay. So this is in fact generalization of the scary Poisson process. Okay. In Poisson process, well, we basically have the same state, but inter arrival times are all have the same exponential distribution with the same rate. Uh, and in this case, we may have actually several Poisson processes superimposed uh, uh, onto each other. Okay? But the general definition of a uh, continuous time Markov chain goes like this. First of all, well, we are given a process X, okay? So maybe, okay, I should say XT is a continuous time, continuous time stochastic process taking integer values, taking integer, well, taking values in a subset of integers, maybe that's better because we don't have to, we may have finite state space processes as well, stochastic process taking values in a subset of integers okay. okay it is called a continuous time Markov chain Okay, maybe it's also a good idea to give a name to this subset E, okay, subset E of integers. It is called a continuous time Markov chain on state space E. If the following relation is true for the condition or the transition probabilities, so the conditional probability that at some time t, s plus t in the future is j given that given the entire history of the process up to time s let's say okay, for every u between 0 and s and including s as well but I just would like to give a specific name to this so that we can use that, we can refer that in the second line. So this should be the same as a conditional uh, probability that at time s plus t, at the same time it is in state j, given only that the chain is in state i at time s. Namely, this conditional probability, right? the conditional probability that in the future the chain is going to be somewhere in some, in some state j given the most recent state of the chain right, in this case at time s is independent of the past of the process as before so it is again what this is right, so this this should be first of all true of course for every choice of x i s and t and j okay? So this should be true for every, right, for every S and T and I and J and XU being values in the state space for every U uh, between a 0 and S, okay, and S. So what is this? This just resembles the similar condition for the Markov chains as well. In that case, we had only a countable many possible. It was a discrete time process, so there were only countable many. Uh, we were specifying the process for only discrete many or countable many different points in time. But otherwise, it still says what? 
future is independent of the past if the present state is given. Right? The conditionally, the conditional distribution of the future given the present state does not depend on the past, which is uh, well expressed like by the second line. So this is the so-called Markov property. Okay. So a continuous time stochastic process is called a continuous time Markov chain if it has Markov property, right? Namely this, if this is true for all possible choices of these variables, right? And in addition, if we also know that this probability, right? Here you see both S and T uh, show up. If this thing is independent of S, namely this protein, if, if this protein doesn't depend on S, right, then, okay, then we say, right, if, okay, maybe I should say if, maybe I should write it here, right, is independent of S for every I and J in the state space and non-negative integer, uh, non-negative real number T, right? Then this continuous time Markov chain, right? So let's also, so this is too long to write every time. Perhaps we should just refer it by this acronym, right? Then this is called what? Time homogeneous. Time homogeneous. Okay. And in all of our discussions, in the remaining lectures, we will always assume that the Markov chain, the continuous time Markov chain that we are given or we are working with, is time homogeneous. And and in that case, we will denote this by Pij of t. And how are we going to read this? That this is the probability of moving from state i to j in exactly t units of time. Right? t units of time. Okay. We have this. And what else do I have? Now, We will also want to know actually how much time we spend in each state before we move to a new state, right? And we will see that actually Markov property, okay, Markov property, okay, implies that is those times are called the sojourn times, okay, sojourn time in any state i, okay, so this is the time spent by the Markov chain before it moves out and moves to a new state, okay. So this, okay, let's write the time spent by this continuous time Markov chain in state i before jumping to a new one, to a new state, so before jumping to a different state, to a different state. Okay? So this is a random variable. We don't know how much time it is going to spend there. Okay? We didn't specify that. But we will see in a moment that actually Markov property, this memorylessness property, right? It is a memorylessness property because when this is given, we don't have to recall this or the chain simply doesn't recall this while uh, it is trying to determine into which state uh, the chain is going to jump. This thing, so your time, has exponential distribution. And this is perhaps not surprising if somehow the memoryless property is involved, right? The times, right? Uh, we may come across some of them, perhaps must have exponential distribution. 
So it is my exponential distribution with, let's say, with some okay mean, which may depend on the state uh, under consideration, namely i in this case, with some mean one over uh, vi, let's say. Okay, so vi is the rate of this mark, uh, exponential uh, random variable. Okay, why is this the case? Well, we can we can argue like this. We can argue like this. Well, suppose that Markov chain, right? This continuous time Markov chain X has been in state I for uh, t units of time, or maybe I should say s units of time. Okay. Suppose that you observe, so you observe the process, and it has, you just you notice that the chain, the Markov chain, has not moved anywhere but stayed uh, until time s in the state I, whatever that is, right? Then you ask to yourselves the following question: Okay, what is knowing this? Okay, what is the probability that this chain X right is going to stay is going to stay in the same state, namely in state I, in the next? S units of time. No, this time T units of time. Okay. Right. What is this? Right. So, how can I write this in terms of the variables and the probabilities? Well, definitely we are talking. We are talking about the conditional probability, and this is right. We are given. We are told that the chain, right, the continuous time Markov chain has been in state i in the last s units of time. So we know that. Right? So given this, what are we asking? We are, well, we are asking what the probability, what, what your best guess is uh, about the likelihood that the chain is going to stay in the same state in the next t units of time. Right? It is this one. Okay, once you write it like this, now on the left hand side you have perhaps more information than you really need, right? Because we know processes Markov properly, it is going to forget about anything related to the past as long as it remembers where it was most recently. Most recently in this case means the state of the chain at time s, right? So because of the Markov property, right? Markov property implies what? This probability is the same as the conditional probability of the same event, of course, okay? given only that at time s the chain was in state i. So we don't have to remember that the chain was in state i or perhaps somewhere else before time s, right? So that comes from Markov property, right? We look at here, we only have to remember the last, the state of the chain at the last time, and the previous history wasn't re re relevant, right? For making any inference for the future. Okay, what else can I say? Now, we said we, we will assume, right, uh, the chain or Markov chain has a time homogeneous transition probabilities. Namely, on the left hand side, we only care about the distance, right, uh, or the time interval in the future, or the distance of the time interval from uh, today, right? So this can be then written as what? S doesn't really matter for the value of S. We may therefore take value 0 instead of S, right? or we can just substitute 0 for S. And in that case, we will get what? So we are concerned about the conditional probability that the chain is going to be in state i in the next t units of time given that initially 
namely at time zero, chain was in theta, right? Because of the time homogeneity. So this is now because of the time homogeneity, right? Okay. And then, all right, so we reduce this to this one, right? But now, what, does, uh, what do these two events mean? If I now introduce a random variable ti to denote the sojourn time, right? Sojourn time in state i, namely what? The time the chain spends in this state before it jumps to a different state, right? So I'm referring to the same terminology here. Then this means what? Before the chain spins, maybe before the chain jumps in different state, the chain must have spent at least how many units of time? This units of time, right? But here you also have what? Well, given this, right, together with, with this one, you now know that Ti has to be greater than S plus T, right? And here, what do I have? I can just equivalently, right? Equivalently, I can write this. So chain has not moved anywhere else, stayed in the same state in the next two units of time. So the sojourn time, namely time until time the, the Markov chain spent in state i until it jumps to a different state, should be at least as large as t. Or strictly, well, that doesn't really matter, but uh, it is strictly greater than t, right? Because of this equality. So what did we learn then? So let me just write the first and last statement together. So we have the conditional distribution that sojourn time is at least, well, is greater than S plus T, given that it is, given that we already know that it is greater than S, is the same as the unconditional probability that the same random variable is strictly greater than T, namely the remaining life. If you just consider T i or the regarded as lifetime of a component as before. And this is true, of course, for every S and T, right? There was nothing special about the choice, my choice, choices of S and T. And what do we know? What kind of a random variable can satisfy this? So this is exponential. This is actually memorylessness property, right? Even after we tell this guy that is at least S units of S units all, and then ask we ask him what uh, the likelihood that he's going to survive all he's going to be around for an additional two units of time. The answer turns out to be what? Well, I am like a baby right now. I just was born, and then it is going to be the same, just the same as that the newborn is going to be around for the next two units of time. It just forgets about its age, right? So therefore, what do we know from here? We conclude what? Ti, right? So the sojourn time, uh, or the time the Markov chain spends before it jumps to another a different state, has exponential distribution. Has exponential distribution. With some mean, which possibly depends on the state in which or the, 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 uh, the, which depend on the state uh, that uh, we are uh, trying to well we, we match this random variable with right so this is the exponential distribution okay with the mean we will see that we mostly r work with the rates therefore rather than writing a rate as one over the mean I am right from the start. I am writing mean itself as uh, one over whatever is suitable uh, letter that I picked for the rate. Okay, no. okay, that's that's a quite a bit actually restriction, right? So when you say that something has uh, Markov property, you end up with actually working exponential uh, random variables. Well, that turns out to be the case. We cannot do much about it, but this also actually gives. Uh, this or this observation okay, suggests another way of constructing or describing Markov chains. 
Okay? Now this suggests, this suggests what? This suggests an alternative and perhaps a better way to describe, actually describe, way to describe the evolution, okay, at least the evolution of a continuous time Markov chain. Okay, let's stick to the same one that we stand. This is Markov chain, X. And, and that is like what? All right. Uh, maybe I can write here. So what happens is, okay. all right. The amount of time, okay, the amount of time that X, our Markov chain, right, spends in. Okay, maybe I should first say that each time, okay, each time this, Marco, this stochastic process X in the first place okay, enters in some state I, the following two things happen. The first one is that the amount of time the chain X is going to spend in this state, okay, in that state, okay, has exponential distribution, okay, in that state before jumping to a different state, has exponential distribution. Okay, again with some mean 1 over nu i. And then when it comes, when the time that Markov chain leaves uh, uh, state i comes, okay, then right, it enters to a new state with some probabilities determined only by this state i and the state into which it is going to jump, okay? Right? And when the process, when the process leaves, okay? The state i, okay? Then it next enters state j, let's say, which some known probabilities, some with some probability Pij. Okay. And here, right? So there are we know how many different possibilities exist, right? For the chain to jump into, namely all the possible J's. Of course Pij has to be non negative, right? And we will make sure that the chain doesn't come to itself because by definition this is the time the chain actually jumps into a different state. So I, J has to be different than I, so the probability that it comes back to itself is going to be always zero in this, in this prescription. And moreover, since okay, the state into which the chain is going to jump next, has to be somewhere in this state space E, the sum has to be 1. So what is PIG? It is actually a one-step transition probability matrix with this special structure, right? So it is never going to jump back into uh, or come back to the same state in one transition, right? And then, so the picture looks like what? So chain starts in one state, okay, and stays there for an exponential distributed random time. And right at the end of that, then it is going to jump to somewhere, right? There, there can be, uh, well, countably many states at most, right? 
positive, negative doesn't really matter, right? And it is going to jump, let's say, to this state, or it may jump to this state, let's say, with probability, if this is i and this is j, with probability pij, and it could have actually jumped to another state, let's say k, with a different probability, pik. Right? For this particular realization, suppose that it jumped into state j, and it is going to stay there for another exponentially distributed amount of time. Right? And then, when at, at the end of this time, right, it is going to move to another state, well, now it is in state J, right? So the probability with which it may actually go to other states, right? These are possibilities. It cannot move to all of them at once. These are going to be like the P, J, K. And if it goes back to I, it is going to be like P, J, I. And per perhaps this is P, J, L, right? We have all these probabilities. This uh, discrete distribution over the state space. And it will jump to one of them. Let's say it jumps to state L. And then it is going to stay there for another exponentially distributed random time. Right? So this has exponential distribution with uh, rate Vi. This time, right, this length of time is in fact the realization of an exponentially distributed random variable with mean which depends on the state j, okay? And this is similarly an exponentially distributed random time with mean uh, uh, vl, okay? Right? And another important observation, which is also actually implied by the Markov property, is the following. To the state into which the state into which the Markov chain jumps, right? Which is also a random variable because you don't know before before the end of the sojourn time in the previous state. So the state into which the Markov chain jumps is also independent of the time that the Markov chain spent in the state just before it jumped to the new state, right? The reason is, but for example, it is like okay, take the first one. Ti was what? the time the chain is spent in state i before it jumped to a different state, right? Okay, we know that, that it's, it is an exponential distribution with rate you know, uh, vi, right? Exponential distribution. And if I denote by, uh, okay, x, perhaps I should just write it like this, right? At time ti, the chain is going to be in a different state, right? So this is, we know, that is different than i, because by definition ti was the time when chain for the first time moved to a different state. And this is itself a random variable, right? And we claim that xti is independent. Okay. xti and ti are independent. Right? Because if not, right, what happens then? If not, if they are not independent, then then the length, then the length of Ti, right? How much time the chain actually spent in state i can, right? Can carry some information, okay? Can carry some information about the value, realized value of, well, Xti, right? right? But this cannot happen if Markov, pro if the chain process, uh, if okay, which contradicts first of all. Okay, let me write that first, which contradicts with the Markov property. Of process X, right? Why is that? Because we can now apply the Markov property right at time ti, right? Or I should say actually, uh, not even ti, so the ti is not a good, is it a good place to apply that? Okay, given, all right, if you are, no, it's, right? S anytime, right, while you are in state i, right? And while you are asking to yourselves in which, what the new state could be, so you're trying to estimate or just predict that, right? 
And while you are making that prediction, which belongs to the future of the process, we know that you don't have to remember actually anything about the past. All you need to remember is that you are right now in Steda. And by that, you also are saying that actually you don't have to recall for how long you have been in state I. All you need to remember that at time U, you are in state I, right? And this doesn't really, this is not enough to tell or for you to figure out for how long you have been in that state, right? Now you lost that information, how come that XTI, right, or the, well, XTI, how come you can actually estimate or the predict XTI under these circumstances? Okay, the Markov property basically actually uh, uh, prohibits you from making any uh, 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 inf additional information, right? From the length for which, for how long you have been stayed, uh, how long you have been in that state to. Uh, predict into which state ultimately or eventually you are going to be jumping into. Right? Therefore, this uh, TIs, right, the exp we know that they are exponentially distributed. Its uh, rate or the, its uh, mean 1 over uh, VI uh, will depend at most to I. It is not going to depend into the state into which it may jump. So it is not like VIJ, which, which, is, which is impossible in this case actually to, to do anything with it, right? So this thing can therefore depend at, mo or, uh, at most, right, to the state in, in which you have been before you jump next, okay? Right? So, all right. So then we'll, we will refer to this uh, description or the equivalent description of Markov process while we are solving several, uh, many problems, I should say. Right? And this, you should always remember this picture. You should always have this picture in mind while you are working on problems uh, regarding uh, or the related with continuous time Markov chains. Now we can look at an example. Okay. Okay. This comes from Ross. And it is, I guess, on page 367, okay? This is what he calls a shoe, shoe shine shop, okay? Which is more common in the United States than here, I guess. Doesn't matter, okay. Okay, consider a shoe shine establishment consisting of only two chairs, chair one and chair two. There are two chairs for the customers to come and sit, right, for, for service. And a customer, okay, upon arrival, goes initially to chair one, right, where his shoes are clean and polished, uh, uh, where his shoes are cleaned and polish is applied, okay. After this is done, the customer moves onto chair two, where the polish is buffed, okay? And the service times at these two chairs are assumed to be independent random variables that are exponentially distributed with respective rates mu one and mu two. So we know how much time it takes to clean the shoe and then after that happens, right, the guy moved to chair two where we just uh, buff the polish and it also takes an exponential amount of time with a known rate mu2 independent of what has happened and how much time it took actually to clean the shoe in the when he was uh, in, the, in, the, in chair one. Now suppose that potential customers arrive according to a Poisson process having rate lambda, right? so the arrival times also uncertain, they, but they follow, they come according to a Poisson process and that a potential customer will enter the system only if both chairs are empty. So apparently everybody is impatient. If there is anybody in, the, in this small shop, they are not going to enter. Okay? They will enter only both of these chairs are empty. Right? Now we'll ask, for example, question, questions like what is the long run 
average time that the shop is going to be empty. Things like that. So we will be interested in the long run behavior of the system. And before that, we should be able to model the problem, right? And this is this can be done by using uh, continuous time Markov chains, and it can be done like this. So we have to first define states for this system, right? What are the system? What are the possible states of this system? Well, there can be no customers, right? Well, there can be one customer sitting on chair one, or there can be one customer sitting on chair two. Is there any other possibility? No, because if there is anybody in store, the next person who comes to the store will not stay, will not enter. Okay, they just make the life, I guess, easier for us. Okay, there is perhaps only one person working, so if anybody says that he's working on somebody else, then he doesn't, he prefer to go somewhere else perhaps, All right? Okay, we have something like this, so now we can define, right, xt as the state, right, I will just say the state, I guess in this case this is different, difficult uh, to describe it without the definition of each possible state state of the system, okay, and we'll see that it is, namely x is a continuous time, continuous time Markov chain on, on a state space consisting of two, three, three states, two doesn't stand for the number of customers, now we are careful about that, so we better describe that, right, now zero means there are no customers, in this shop, one means there is one exactly one customer sitting right? okay sitting in chair one and two is what t two corresponds two is the state standing for the uh, situation corresponding to one customer right in this store sitting in this time chair two. Right? Okay. Now we have zero, one and two. I mean similar to the state transition probability diagram for Markov change, we can also draw in this case for a continuous time Markov change a state transition rate. Not probability but rate diagram. Right? I guess we are a lot better in uh, figuring out state transitions uh, in a figure like this. So the zero corresponds to no customers. Uh, right? So the chain is going to stay in this state for how long? or an exponentially distributed random of time with rate lambda. And at the end of that period, it is going to move to one of these states. And to which? To which state is, can this chain move? Into one. So we will then put an arc and just put the rate of the exponential, well, well, uh, well the time it takes for the chain to move to this new state from wherever we are, okay? And then if you are in state uh, one, right, we can move only to state two, right, because the service is not being completed uh, uh, until after the, uh, the customer uh, will have been served in chair two, right, so we cannot move, it is not going to move like this, right? And the service, right, so the chain is going to first of all move to this state after an exponential amount of time, which has rate what? We did not write here, but I read that, right? Service times are, well, okay, let us just put here. It is mu1, okay? Question says so, right? And then the person is in, there is already a person in state, uh, in, in, in ch uh, chair two, right? It is gonna take an exponential amount of time Right, to serve this person, and its rate is mu2, or its mean is 1 over mu2, and at the end of that period, 
the process is going to move to state zero. All right. Now, in order to completely characterize this continuous time Markov chain, what do I have to specify? I have to find uh, the rate, right, of exponential sojourn times, the time that the Markov chain is going to spend in each of these chains before it moves out, right, has a rate nu i, and we have to find nu zero, I should, I sometimes, I call nu sometimes v, it's because I am going back and forth between Greek and the our alphabet, okay, but I mean the same thing, all right, so we would like to, we have to find, right, the rates uh, v0, v1, and v2, right, and what are they? These are rates, maybe I should just write exponential rates for short, okay? By this, what do I mean? The rate of exponential distribution associated with the sojourn times in uh, all of these three states. Exponential rate associated with sojourn times in states 0, 1, and 2, okay? Okay, that's one thing that we have to figure out. The other thing is what? These, once the transition probabilities that we need in step 2. So if we figure out these values, then we will know how long, right? Suppose that you are simulating a process, simulating a uh, shoe shine uh, shop like this, so, by, if we figure out those numbers, then you will know uh, how to generate these exponential random variables because we will have known, right, uh, these rates. But then we, have to, we also have to figure out these uh, one-step uh, transition probabilities, right, so that the process can move forward. And then we have to know, right, P in this case you see that you can actually go from 0 to 1 at the end of whatever or how much time you spend in this, uh, however time you spend in state 0, right? And once you are in state 1, at the end you know that you will move to state 2 and from state 2 you will go back to state 0. And even just the way I described that it is clear that these are all going to be 1, right? And what are these? numbers then. What is the rate of exponential distribution corresponding to sojourn time in state zero? Huh? How much time on average the process you're going to spend in state zero? Zero means what? No customers. What is, so it changes, even picture just says that, right? That, that was the purpose of drawing the picture anyway. Right? It can only move to state one, and it can move, right, as soon as a customer shows up, right, and the time until the customer comes in, right, has exponential distribution. That is also the same as the sojourn time for the process, uh, the, the process spends in stage zero, right? So therefore this is in fact lambda in this case, right? And the time the chain is going to spend in state one is the same as the service time given to this customer sitting in chair one, and we know that it's service times in chair one have a rate new one, so this also is, is the same as the rate of exponentially distributed sojourn time in state one. And similarly, V2 equals, uh, equals uh, mu2, right? Okay. We have all these things, then we can actually generate or just even simulate this process over there, okay? All right, and later we are going to see how we can use all these rates to calculate long run or the, uh, to do the long run uh, analysis of this chain. Maybe I should do another example of this kind. Do we have any questions about this? Have I argued that sojourn times which are exponentially distributed in each of these states must be lambda mu1 and mu2? Do we have any questions about this? Huh? We are comfortable. 
right? So th if this was an exam question, you would now know how to do that, right? Not before, perhaps, but now we know. Okay. Okay, another, ex uh, another example. Or maybe exercise? I guess this is an exercise. 